What's up everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Osu News. This is your weekly show where we talk about the most important Osu News that happened during the week. So yeah, over the course of the previous week, there were a lot of interesting news topics that we're going to talk about in this video. So let's just get started. Actually, before we do, if you just want to be updated on the latest news that happens in the Osu community, then consider hitting the sub button. Your support would really mean a lot. So over the course of the past few weeks, we all talked about how Kolibet finally passed Emrek on the Osu global leaderboards and finally getting rank 1 in Osu. This was a pretty big deal because if you didn't know, Emrek has been rank 1 for let's just say almost three and a half years. So to see this on the official Osu wiki page, it was quite interesting to see someone at the rank 1 position other than Emrek. And well, the thing is, with some of the chokes that Emrek has been sitting and posting this tweet right here, we thought that maybe he will take a bit longer for Emrek to get that rank 1 position. That is, until the 29th of July of 2024 when Emrek managed to set up 1.4 kpp play on the map by the name of taking you out. This score came out of nowhere and it would have taken Emrek to the number one position if it wasn't for Aquilibet getting a 1.5 kpp play on Necro Fantasia remix getting the first DTFC on the map literally one hour before Emrek set his 1.4 kpp play. And this is where people actually got excited. People were finally seeing a battle for rank one after after god knows how many years and so naturally they were waiting to see what emrek's next move will be and oh boy they definitely witnessed it on august 3rd of 2024 emrek went live on twitch and he only had one goal set for that stream which was to get his rank one position back and oh boy some of the plays that were set on this stream were absolutely nuts just to highlight some of them we have a 1.5k choke on ringo uri no utakata shoujo with the a Sendum Life S rank, which would have been a 1.6k PP play if it wasn't for that one slider break on the map. A 2 miss choke on Inai Sekai with hidden DT, which would have been the PP record in the game if it wasn't for those two misses. And after all these scores slash chokes that all gave Emrek a ton of PP on that stream, Emrek finally managed to take back his number one position on the global leaderboards with a choke on the map by the name of Choo Choo, the top difficulty of the map which he played with hidden double time and he managed to get only three misses on it oh yeah and if you were wondering what his reaction was to him getting rank one back well this is the clip GG 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 right hello 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 GG 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 Oh, I'm so I'm so happy. I I got I fucking got deep into that run. I wish I didn't miss the first time though. And well, people were also wondering how did Aquilibet react to Emma getting rank 1 back? Well, at first he just said that he doesn't give a flip about it. And when he was screaming and the title, it said that he was not in the best mood. However, it doesn't seem that Aquilibet is going to give up that fast that soon as well. Because on the 5th of August, he did show that he got a few chokes on a few maps. But yeah, what do you think about Emma getting his rank 1 position back on the also global leaderboards? Let me know down in the comments but yeah in other news this week you already know the reason why i was absent is because coe 2024 was happening you've probably already seen a few pictures from content creators of the event on twitter and for those that already don't know this is how i look that's me on the right of course like i previously revealed i am scytho i don't know who that person is on the left side of the picture the dude just asked to be on the pick or something like that like i don't even know who that guy is man he, he gotta be some random or something but the main topic that i want to talk about in this video is the finals of the coe x yuki aim tournament for 2024 now this portion of the video will contain spoilers for the coe finals so if you haven't watched it then be sure to do so however the finals match of coe 2024 was between malishevsky and kriller previously malishevsky had to face off ninerik in the semi-finals of the tournament where he won 5-1 against ninerik however kriller had to 
face off a pretty tough opponent in the semi-finals by the name of Bubble Man. Now, although he won 5-3 against Bubble Man, it wasn't that easy. It was actually a pretty close match and if you watched it live then you already know why. Which leads me to the finals matchup which was Maliszewski versus Krillin. Now I am going to show you a clip of how it looked like to watch the finals of the tournament from a crowd's perspective. High level of play in our top 16 but somehow Maliszewski managed to pump that. How do you do this mate? Like, with 97.5 you're kidding. Man, you're kidding me. Maliszewski, how are you still holding on to this? Krillin's trying so hard to fight back, he's trying so desperately hard. We know what he can do, but there's just nothing here that he can build up of. Malashevsky is making a tear. How on earth is he hitting all of this so far? A thousand combo with throws! What Everything the fuck? The if there's anything we know about Malashevsky, one of the best in the world, one of the greatest of all time, be it in any environment, be it in land, be it in Now, by the result, it looks like Maliszewski absolutely swept the floor with Kriller. However, if you watched the match itself, then you already know that it was insanely close. On almost every single pick you can think of that was played on the match itself, the difference in score was almost always by a couple of thousand of points. But how about I propose something to Yao? If this video does manage to get 1000 likes in the first 24 hours of the video being up, then I will post the full match between Maliszewski and Kruer from the crowd's perspective to watch it on your own. Once again, if you want to see that, then be sure to hit that thumbs up button. But yeah, how about we talk about something interesting and actually some really good news that recently happened. So you probably have heard of a YouTuber by the name of Hugo Frost. He is a massive Osu content creator with over 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. But if you followed Hugo Frost in the past, then you already know that he has been doing military service for more than a year now almost a year and a half actually. And well, Hugo Frost on July 29th of 2024 posted this picture right here, pretty much saying that he has finally finished his mandatory military service for South Korea. In the picture he stated, one of the memories that I will never forget, thank you all. But even more exciting is the fact that Hugo Frost just a few hours ago as of me recording this audio, actually said that he is going to post a new video tomorrow. He is going to post it at around 10pm Korean Standard Time, so mark that on your calendar because Hugo Frost is finally coming back to making content. But yeah, how do you feel about Hugo Frost finally returning after almost a year and a half of not making content because of military service? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Other pretty interesting and important news that happened that week, someone at COE accidentally managed to get the Domino's Delivery Girl hooked into the game Osu. The COE 2024 PP record this year was set by Andros with a 995 PP play on Lionheart. Fanboy Gaming is now the highest ranked fanboy passing Kazuma. The one digit meetup did indeed happen at COE. You now need at least 17,000 PP to be able to reach the Tom 100 in standard. For the very first time in 3 years, Shigetora hasn't played the game in a month. Other than COE 2024, a few days before that event, Moscow's also event 2024 actually happened. And here is their group picture if you were wondering. And the final thing that I wanted to talk about that was actually revealed at COE is the fact that there's going to be a new Osu LAN event slash tournament by the name of Sydney Scottish LAN Rumble. The LAN event is apparently going to be hosted at Dundee and it's going to happen next year so be sure to keep an eye out for more information related to this tournament because it's actually going to be rather interesting. But yeah, that's essentially it for today's also news episode. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye bye.